Okay, what we're going to do now is calculate the change in entropy, delta S, for an ideal gas undergoing a reversible process. Okay, so we're going to come up with a general equation here for any reversible process. So we know that for an ideal gas, the change in internal energy is equal to the heat added plus the work done on the gas. So we can write this in differential form as if we have a small change in internal energy, that's equal to the small amount of heat added plus the small amount of work done on the gas. Now, we've already learnt a lot about the change in internal energy and the work done. So we know that the work done on a gas is equal to minus P dV. We've also seen that the change in internal energy, dE int, is equal to NCV times dT where CV is the specific heat at constant volume. So when we saw this before, it was written this way. But delta and D just mean the same thing. They mean a change. We generally use D if we mean a small change and delta for slightly larger changes. But these are essentially the same equation. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're going to substitute these into here. What we'll be using is that our change in entropy is equal to the integral from the initial state to the final state of dq over t. So eventually we're trying to come up with something of this format. Okay, so what we're going to do is take this equation and rearrange it. We have dq is equal to dE int minus dW. And now we'll be substituting from up here into this equation. So we've got the change in internal energy is equal to NCV dT, T is the temperature, and then we've got minus dW, and dW is equal to minus P dV. So this is plus P dV. Now this is an ideal gas, so it obeys the ideal gas law. PV is equal to NRT, which allows us to write P is equal to nRT over V. Okay, so now we can replace this P with this. So we've got dQ is equal to nCV dT plus nRT on V dV. Okay, now, because we're trying to get to this, the next thing we're going to need to do is divide by temperature. So we have dQ over T is equal to NCV dT over T plus dividing by T here, we end up with NR dV on V. And now we're trying to get the entropy. So let's integrate everything between the initial and the final state. We do that to both sides, initial and final, initial and final. Okay, so we have our change in entropy, which is this thing is equal to NCV. Now for this integral, remember that if you integrate one on x dx, that's equal to log x plus some constant. Now the constant here comes about because the constant of integration, which we don't need to worry about now because we've got limits on the integral. So they get rid of the need for this constant. But the important point is that dx over x, when we integrate that, we end up with log x. So that's exactly what we're doing here. We end up with the integral log t, and we're going from the initial state to the final state, plus nr, and here we've got dv on v. So here we end up with log v, and from the initial state to the final state. So this is equal to ncv, specific heat at constant volume, and this will be log of the final temperature minus log of the initial temperature plus nr log of the final volume minus log of the initial volume. And then remembering back to our log rules, if we have log a minus log b, this is equal to log of a over b. 
So we can write this as NCV log TF over T initial plus NR. Sorry, that's a log after that of V final over V initial. Okay, so we've now come up with an expression for the entropy change as an ideal gas undergoes any reversible process. We didn't need to make any assumptions about the type of process in this case because a change in internal energy, that's a function of the state, not a function of the path. So it's always equal to NCV dt and dw is always equal to minus PdV. So there was no assumptions here about the type of path. Okay, so let's practice using this equation now. You wouldn't be expected to derive this equation in the ex exam, but you do need to be able to apply this equation.